Good day, traders. This is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. Welcome to today's session of London FX and CFD trading. Good morning, Steve, Matthias, Chandra. All right. Uh, loud and clear already. Hello, Paolo. Uh, looks like we've got good audio. Video. All right, good. Okay. So before we get started, you guys know the drill, risk disclaimers, and then we will move on. All righty then. All right, so this week, uh, this week could be pretty pivotal for the for the dollar. Uh, we're we're down here at a pretty big, uh, pretty big support zone long term. We've been talking about this for a little while. Last month, uh, we had a we had a bit of a power struggle, uh, as evidenced by the the Doji like uh, monthly candle. It wasn't a precise open and close at the same price, but it was pretty close. Uh, comes at a, a so the dollar index is is at this really big area here, uh, and so we have this power struggle going on. Uh, it's been quite a few months down in a row, although months in a row or any kind of streak is not necessarily a reason for expecting something to reverse. But when you get uh, when you get down into a support zone and, and you've and you've had such a one-way one-way trade, uh, it, it certainly does uh, does set the does set the tone for a possible reversal. And we had that that really nice reversal last week, uh, that nice key reversal on Tuesday, got a bit of a bounce, and now we're seeing a probe back down here lower, and, and obviously the euro being 57 percent of the DXY index uh, is going to is going to be a huge driver uh, with the ECB coming up tomorrow, uh, and so certainly you know are we going to see are we going to see a a resurgence of the euro, uh, or is this this big reversal that we had around the 2012 low is this is this going to have uh, Turned out to be a point that that, that marks a high. Um, I'm still of the mindset that we've we've got some more uh, some more downside to come. Uh, but obviously tomorrow, depending on how things play out there, uh, that's that's going to set the tone. Uh, that could set the tone for the next next few weeks. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, that we do have a big event. Uh, we are coming off some pretty big levels. It's it's a it's a it's a very important time, I would say, uh, looking out over the next few weeks. Uh, and as long as I'm still of the mindset that we're going to move lower, as long as the euro stays below this reversal day high, uh, that will be the case. Now, looking at the the four hour, so we can get a little a little closer look here. Uh, this was the spike here that we had. This was the uh, this was the NFP number. Uh, we had the well, we kind of had a, a double doozy there. We had NFPs, and then shortly thereafter, there was some. Uh, Bloomberg was reporting that the ECB may wait up till the final moments toward uh, later in the year uh, before deciding on what to do uh, with their uh, QE program. And with that in mind, uh, we saw we saw some selling. Uh, in the euro specifically, although we did see you know, we did see some some dollar uh, strength come in despite the the uh, the worse than expected uh, overall the the jobs report was not good uh, even wage inflation was was weak and uh, we had unemployment tick up and and then we out and then we had the headline figure with NFP coming in light uh, but all that created another jab higher in the euro. And, and reversal, uh, and we're holding really well though right now along this this trend line, and and we can see here we've got a lot of a lot of key in, inflection points. So, in order in, in order for this 
to, to work its way back lower. Um, looking for a, a drop below this trend line to, to confirm that, that we're putting in, a, or if perhaps we've already put in a, a lower high, uh, that we put in a lower high and that we're likely to then resume uh, to the downside, not expecting necessarily for the euro to, to fall apart. Uh, but certainly with, with the reversal coming uh, where it did, and then given this technical structuring uh, with this trend line, that if we did break, uh, that would reassert uh, downward momentum. We do have a little support here, uh, but I think that given the fact that we've been trading on this trend line uh, and, and respecting it uh, so much, I think it's a, it's a more important technical uh, event than, say, this horizontal support here. Uh, but we get below there, you know, I'm looking for a move back towards just you know, around the 117 mark, uh, which also, if you get back to the daily chart, uh, we've got this trend line, uh, which comes in and around 117.60. That may be of importance there. Uh, I think that that at the very least, we would, if we would see that break on the four hour, we'd at least get a test uh, of this trend line. And, and perhaps then horizontal support, which comes in around 117, even down to 116.70. So very, very, uh, very important right now that, that uh, if the euro is going to move lower, that we do get below this, this trend line here. Uh, it's support for as long as it holds. So um, yeah, while, I, while I think that it'll probably break, I'm still respecting it as support until it does actually uh, break. Uh, looking at cable, cable's been uh, cable's been stronger, right? So we've got we've got cable getting a nice little pop here. Uh, you know, the question is 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 this are we looking at this as being another higher low uh, in a developing sequence that's been going back since earlier in the year? Did we carve out another higher low at support down here? We were talking about this this being a, a pretty big level uh, in the 127s. We had a high here, so consolidation, swing low, swing high, swing low. Uh, is this turning out to be you know kind of a kind of a seesaw channel working its way higher? If the dollar is to actually have some kind of rebound here, then that that probably is going to get undermined. Uh, a bit here. If we look at the four hour, uh, we we kind of were doing a little bit of a of an ascending wedge here. Uh, and yesterday we we popped up about above the top side trend line, and we're we're holding it right now as support. So there is you know there is some reasons to be constructive uh, in cable. Uh, if if it were to break back down and take out this lower side trend line, then I think that that would you know that would then we'd probably be seeing a, a broader dollar move back to the upside, and then in that case it would shift the focus lower. So kind of an, on a holding pattern personally uh, on on cable and, and where it's at right now. But it, it is it is showing some decent strength off of a big support area. So I think when you look at the euro and then you look at cable, two of the bigger uh, bigger currencies uh, that the euro is is set up, and then we have a catalyst is is set up potentially for a a, a bigger move here, uh, and and more weakness uh, versus say cable. I, I would be a little hesitant to be too bearish on right now. Uh, dollar yen, dollar yen not looking too good, uh, but we are down here at a pretty big area of support. Uh, and, and we had this was this was the Tuesday reversal that we saw uh, in the dollar as a whole. And with that in mind, it, it's really important that this day low, which comes in at, on a closing basis, it's really important that this day low, uh, which is 108, I think 26, and then this one is 108.13, that that we don't close down, uh, basically below 108. Uh, and, and if we can hold in here, then, then maybe we can gain some traction. But overall, the, the, the trend's not real encouraging. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't get another bounce back up so, towards, say, 110 and three quarters, 111. Uh, so uh, to me, 
it's it's kind of a Dalian's a, a little has a little less clarity than than some other things do, but certainly at a at a support level here that would be nice to see and hold. Um, let's go to let's go to dollar cat because to later today we've got we've got the BOC. Um, I was looking at one day options and the the level of implied volatility is 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 pretty ramped up. Uh, it's pretty high, so there's there's an expectation by the options market that we're going to see a sizable move uh, out of dollar CAD, and we're at a very interesting juncture here. This is finally uh, this blue box here is is the reason I. I've got that in there is because this was that trend line from back to 2012, uh, the swing low here, and we've got you know some really big, some really big swing points there. Uh, it's been quite a while since it's been visited, uh, it, but we do have a a pretty significant trend line here, and this was something that I was been talking about is maybe getting that lower low into that trend line. Uh, maybe maybe suck in some more uh, sellers on this break that we just saw uh, in the last few days uh, below this prior low, and now we're at this big trend line. We've got a big event. The market's looking for a big move, so it could certainly be an interesting day here. We could get some type of uh, we get some type of validation as this as support, or if we just get a one-way trade through, then then that could be a, a, a significant break. Uh, and and then that trend line in that case uh, will have failed, and and uh, dollar CAD will be at risk of further losses. So this is uh, again, you know, it's kind of like how you got the euro pivotal spot, big event. You got dollar CAD pivotal spot. Big event, so we're we're at some uh, some crossroads here, and and uh, next couple of days we should have some clarity on a couple of these things. Uh, let's take a look now at Aussie. Aussie, uh, well we we were looking at this over here on this trend line, and it continues to hold. Uh, it continues to hold, and and with that, it, it's you know, it's difficult to be, again. As long as it holds, kind of like the euro, we were looking at that four-hour chart. If it holds a trend line and it keeps touching it, then you know, you've got to respect it as support. Uh, even if this is going to become a lower high, uh, yeah, I would want to wait for a, a break of the trend line first. Uh, but right now, you know, there's not a there's not a lot for uh, sellers to lean on. Uh, it, let's just go back real quick. I don't want to. Get ahead of myself, but we do have not far ahead. We do have a zone. Uh, it's more easily seen on the weekly. Let's go back to the weekly. We do have a, a pretty significant zone of, of resistance. Uh, that well, we just came off of it not that long ago, uh, a few weeks back. Uh, that goes back 2010. You can see we've got some some turn points here. Uh, so even on a move higher here, Aussie has has some potential resistance that could could keep it from from gaining any real traction uh, and so right now you know it's we're again the dollar looks like it wants to have some kind of bounce uh, and, and you know, you've got again the euro at a critical spot dollar cat at a critical spot uh, are we are we putting in we're putting in a lower high here uh, a slight lower high uh, I'll I'll wait and see if if that's going to be the case. Then I'll wait for this this trend line to break if that's going to be the case, and and then go from there. Uh, looking at Kiwi, so Kiwi carved out a head and shoulders. Uh, it's you know I've talked about this already. Not not my not my favorite in terms of symmetry. We've got a very very long neck and head. I guess you want to call it. Uh, with the left shoulder, right shoulder, uh, it's a little disproportionate, uh, but nevertheless, it is a it is a valid pattern, and but it's kiwi, and it will test your resolve <laughs> uh, in terms of of how it uh, of how it trades. You know, you want to. This is one that that you know, to me, it's you know, yen pairs. If we've talked about before, uh, more momentum. You can get away with uh, 
you can get away with maybe breakouts and breakdowns and whatnot. Whereas Kiwi is one that you've you've got to be careful about your entries. You don't want to be selling into any real down moves or buying into any really big up moves because this thing has a lot of overlap in its price action. But we've got we do have this break here, and if Kiwi is going to turn uh, lower within within the constructs of this head and shoulders. I don't foresee it then being able to. You know, we're kind of getting a neckline retest right now. The neckline is not the clearest. Uh, it's not the cleanest uh, neckline. Uh, but I would say that if if we got above the 829 reversal day high, which is around 73, uh, if we got above there, then then perhaps that would that would start to take away the the juice from this this head and shoulders and and uh, the potential bearishness of it. Uh, looking at the four hour, we still have here. We, we we got above this trend line that comes off of this high, which would be the head. Uh, but we do have right here. We can see that we've got some nice connecting points uh, between here here, and then we we turn lower, uh, lower lows, lower highs. So uh, right now, this is this is kind of a critical spot. Um, I think that you know I was talking about before that reversal day high, which is actually on the four hour, is this swing high. Um, I think that if it's going to turn lower, uh, probably not getting above this swing high here would be uh, the, the the cleanest way for this to play out, uh, and it would still be in line with these these lower lows, lower highs. Uh, it, it is certainly, if we got down here and, and stopped and started to turn back up, then that would be a, a and broke this trend line. That would be a cause for pause. Uh, but right now, lower lows, lower highs within the context of uh, a head and shoulders that's still in play. Uh, it points to an increased likelihood that we will see a turn down here. Now, getting into a couple of the cross rates. So I wanted to I wanted to look at Sterling Kiwi. Uh, Sterling Kiwi is a particular interest to me because, and this is a this is a this is something that that you know I've I've talked about on on many occasions. One of my one of my one of my favorite types of setups is to see a resistance level broken and then treated as support, vice versa. Uh, it, it, on the downside. Now, with that said, we've got here uh, swing highs over here, a lot of struggle, swing highs, swing highs, and then we had some trend lines uh, coming down. You know, we go all the way back to this peak in in August 2015. We could take this uh, major uh, swing high here back from last year and we draw these trend lines down and basically what we've got is that we've we also crossed above those so we, we, we broke up above what was originally resistance and then we've gotten a retest and yesterday we got a nice little rejection and if we look at the four hour uh, take it any a little bit closer uh, we've got also, or we're we're holding that that old resistance as support, but we've also got this trend line uh, coming up from last month, and even the swing high. And yesterday we put in a a, a pin bar reversal on the four hour. Uh, so we've got even on the we got the bigger picture. We've got some support. We've got some support on the on the four hour. So as long as we stay above yesterday's low, uh, I think that that test. Uh, that we just had of, of support here yesterday, and it, it could turn out to be, you know, something that we see uh, Sterling Kiwi really start to maybe pick up some momentum to the top side. So this is one that I'm uh, I'm tracking very closely. Uh, if we take a look at, we'll take a look at Euro Kiwi. Euro Kiwi is not. I don't. This one to me is is has a little less clarity to it just because we don't have the same kind of levels uh, that we were presented with there on the on, on Starling Kiwi. So Euro Kiwi is is we had a nice one here actually, but that's neither here nor there now. Uh, Euro Kiwi, you know we've got we've got some trend line support. All right, so we do have that going for it, but in terms of having that that confluence of levels like we had with uh, the sterling kiwi not quite there with the euro kiwi but probably 
if if you're going to see Sterling Kiwi make a big upside move, we're going to see something happen to the top side in Euro Kiwi as well. Uh, but I, I do like the the Sterling Kiwi uh, setup. Uh, let's take a look at let's go into Euro Sterling. So Euro Sterling. First off, we had we had the the overthrow of this rising wedge reversal day broke back to the bottom side. Uh, we're right now we're we're hanging on to this this retest from back here when we had the flash crash. Uh, we had the flash crash in in, in uh, the pound, and that created a spike high. We had a retest. Uh, right now we're we're kind of sitting down there holding it as support. If we look at the four hour. Uh, one of the possible developments is that we could be getting uh, some type of uh, falling wedge. Uh, right now the trend is bearish uh, in the near term just simply by looking at you know, a low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, we got a slight lower low. Uh, so it does keep it pointed downward, but if we were to, to kind of fill this out, and then again, of course, we've got the ECB tomorrow, so that's going to be uh, that's going to be a, a big driving factor for how this plays out, and perhaps this pattern here won't even really have mattered so much. But it is getting pretty close to a point where we should see a break, and that would be you know by tomorrow. Uh, but it may not. It may not have the. A lot of times, falling wedges have, uh, in an, an uptrend, they have a, a bullish outcome to them. Uh, but we do have a, a short-term negative. And again, we did break above this rising wedge and then back below it. So I'm, I'm still kind of leaning towards the the notion that that there's more bear than bull there. Uh, but it's it's not as uh, again we've got some crosswinds here with support and and then you know a couple different patterns playing out and then a big event uh, so euro sterling might be one of the more indecisive ones uh, even though it does have some some decent technicals playing out here because it's kind of well which one's going to dominate which which particular uh, pattern is going to dominate um, euro Aussie. Euro Aussie is one that been been watching it uh, from kind of afar because it hasn't had the the cleanest uh, look to it. Uh, just you know, looking at the daily, we we do have uh, we do have a channel that's working higher here. We do have a couple of parallels. It's not the cleanest. I I tend to give more benefit of the doubt to the upside, but you know that's that's one of the, it's one of those things I'm kind of staying away from it, and I only bring it up because I do uh, I do talk about I, for a while we were talking about this thing a lot uh, at the end of last year, uh, and then and then this year along the way it's it's kind of broken down in terms of having uh, the cleanest looks. Uh, Sterling Aussie had a nice uh, rejection yesterday at support, nice uh, nice reversal day. That came on on an attempt to break down. Uh, probably, if you see Sterling Kiwi head higher than Sterling Aussie, is going to get some kind of bounce too. Uh, but I think that probably the Sterling Kiwi is 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 the one that'll that'll end up shaping up the best if we do see some upside in these European currencies versus these commodity uh, pairs. Uh, let's take a look now at Sterling Yen. I wanted to take a look at that one. So sterling yen, you can't really, you know, you can see it here. But I, first of all, I just want to say, yesterday we had we had a little bit of a reversal, uh, or a little bit of a reversal day. And if you look at this, when you get down to the four hour, uh, that reversal came on what could be the left shoulder uh, of a of an inverted head and shoulders pattern, right? So there would be your left shoulder, your head. And then possible right shoulder. Uh, the the reversal came from this low, which was a peak over here, and so we do have some pretty good support here. Uh, I think that you know also with this trend line coming up uh, underneath this low, and then we can see here we've got numerous inflection points. That sterling yen, as long as it stays above yesterday's low. 
uh, that it, it, it stands the chance to, to turn higher uh, and I would say that you know with with the way that this is overall playing out and possibly being a right shoulder uh, if we were to get up here on the neckline and start to move higher we would have some levels to worry about at 144 but I think from a very short term uh, this down here from my perspective is, is somewhat of an attractive uh, spot to look for sterling in to turn higher uh, and, and I'm not particularly bullish on on yen crosses or, or dollar yen uh, but this does this does to me present uh, a, a possibility that, that we could get uh, a trade back up towards say 144 which would be uh, an underside retest of this trend line that obviously we can see lots of inflection points has been in play uh, over here it became resistant and so this would be an area that that I could see uh, this turning up to if if we can maintain above uh, that support that that we just tested yesterday um, let's see let's we could look at a couple of the other ones, I suppose. Let's take a look at. So we've got we've got euro yen here. It's unclear exactly what the angle of this trend line will be. Uh, if we were to turn higher and 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 really you know show a good strong showing here, then I would use today's low. Uh, a lot of time left in today to to be able to to make that call. Uh, but. You look at this and, and you, know, you think to yourself, we just had to turn down uh, off of this old peak here, and now it's got the it's got the opportunity to put in a higher low. Uh, we could get some kind of ascending wedge here, but you know, with the ECB, how's that going to play out? You know, that's that's the you know that's the sixty four thousand dollar question, right? So. Uh, I think that that with once we get past ECB, we'll we'll have some better clarity on on some of these euro uh, euro pairs. Um, let's take a look at dollar max. Dollar max continues to struggle uh, around this this area uh, around 1790 uh, under 18. It's been it's been something that's been in play for uh, quite some time now. This is going all the way back to. Uh, March of last year, uh, lots of inflection points, and then it, it struggles to, to to maintain above. Um, you know, I don't. I, I think that this is one that that with a little more time, uh, I, I think if it stays below 18, then then the then the upper hand is is to the bears' uh, advantage. Uh, but I, I with a little more time, there may be. You know, there's there's always the possibility that we, you know, take them and make a move back down and, and kind of form out a triangle here. It's hard to say, uh, but around 1790 is is certainly an area that that it's been struggling and and if it's going to maintain, you know, the generally bearish outlook that it's had, uh, it'll it'll need to stay below there. But if it gets up above 18, uh, and and it takes out this swing high 1805. Uh, and we start to see some good dollar strength, and and, and also it, it helps against uh, peso. Then you've you've got the possibility here. It's it's kind of a leaning pattern. Uh, you've got the possibility for uh, you know this this takes on the shape of a of an inverted head and shoulders, right? Because you've got the left shoulder, you have the low, and then you've got which would be the head, and then the right shoulder. Uh, but it's it's not really showing any you know and, and and if you wanted to get real technical on it you could say it did break the neckline uh, which would be you, know, you could let's just back this out draw it like this and you could say yeah it's outside the neckline but it's not convincingly outside the neckline it's it didn't have any kind of real big pop and that's something that I would have liked to have seen to really bring this pattern I guess into into full view but if we do get a big pop uh, then I you know at that point then we would have to uh, I think abandon a a short bias in uh, dollar max and and then and then work with something to the top side um, let's go to let's take a look now 
Uh, let's jump to uh, gold. Gold continues to be uh, the bull market forces continue. Uh, we we've got gold as we were talking about yesterday. It's coming up into some some big levels. Uh, I think that really the the big focus is this this 2016 high uh, at 1375. Uh, we do have you know some some swing lows or swing highs rather that that came at this 2011 trend line which we had been talking about for months and months and months. Uh, so it does make those important and and we are we are up there testing some of these levels again as long as we maintain this bullish uh, channel. You know, and even even with the dollar setting at support, it, it, the the two can rally together, uh, and and so I you know I still think that even if we do get a dollar bounce, because a dollar bounce might be a correction, and gold may be you know given the fact that it's it's above the 2011 trend line, it's broke above these double tops back here by a long shot. Uh, you know, momentum is in is favoring. Uh, gold to the upside, you know, we could see a little correction in the dollar and, and it not have too much of a bearing on gold and they could both move together. So don't, you know, that's what I was talking about yesterday, not getting married to that correlation too much because uh, the two can move together uh, and they do from time to time. Uh, silver, silver still looking pretty constructive. Again, regardless of how you drew it, uh, the 2000 or July uh, 2016 trend line was breached, uh, which which help further along this channel. Again, as long as this channel holds, uh, then I think it's kind of difficult, given that we are above some some key levels. You know, we just broke above this this June high. Uh, given that we are above some key levels, and we are within this channel, you know, giving the benefit of the doubt to the to the top side. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look at let's take a look at oil because oil's uh, oil's making some moves here. I've I've got oil penciled in here as having some problems here coming up fairly shortly. Uh, it, it, oil's kind of all over the place, so I still it, it's all over the place. So you know, as we were talking about yesterday and yesterday's webinar, uh, this broadening. This kind of overarching rounding top uh, is still something that I think is in play, and that that rallies are at risk of failing. Uh, and and with that, you know, I'm looking at I'm still looking at resistance levels as as being difficult to to overcome. And and we do have a a, a nice trend line coming off this February high. Uh, that's that's not too far away. It's about forty cents away. So that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, as resistance. Let's go and look at, let's look at the, uh, we'll look at the S&P. So the S&P yesterday, and, and yesterday I, you know, we were down just a little bit and it was, we had that North Korea uh, nuclear test on Sunday. Uh, markets weren't really responding all that bearishly. Uh, and we had a small gap down, and and I, you know, I thought that that I thought that we would probably trade higher from there. Uh, we and then we saw a, a pretty aggressive down move uh, develop. You know, I'm looking at this right now. I still think that that we've got to give the benefit of the doubt to the top side. I, you know, it's it's I you know, instinctually I want to be bearish based on just where we're at and this cycle of the market, but these things can be very, very difficult to time in terms of a top. Uh, and obviously with, with bearishness uh, comes higher volatility and with higher volatility comes more opportunity, right? So uh, I would like to be bearish. Uh, I'd like to see the market start to really confirm something to the downside, but I still think that, that you know, either we're going to have some more chop. Uh, we really are going to need to kind of roll over here uh, to put in to put in a, a, a topping uh, type situation and we're gonna, we're gonna need to roll over and stay rolling over not not one of these uh, you know these little mini bear markets that we have where they're quickly met with buying uh, that that sequence is going to need to be broken before we can get uh, too uh, too bared up because get too bared up and it, it just hasn't worked over 
over the years really uh, we've only had a, a few periods where it's it's worked uh, looking at the DAX the DAX is still struggling with this this trend line off the June high uh, yesterday we were clearly above it and then we had a reversal uh, that put the clothes right around it uh, we're, we're kind of here in a in a rock and a hard spot here uh, we've got a, a trend that's moving lower although it has been very choppy lately uh, the I was looking at the three-month correlation to the euro and it's it's like minus 94 percent so it's it's very significant and with that tomorrow ECB euro makes a big move uh, you're gonna you're gonna almost certainly see the DAX make a, a contra move to however the euro goes so if the euro can can uh, can reassert itself to the downside then we could see this trend line easily broken and and really the, the big level uh, to get the market positioned positively we've got to get above 12,300 really around 12,350 uh, before before the DAX can can start to gain some traction because we've got a lot a lot of levels around there uh, and so that's all right Yuri you can you can uh, Yuri says arrived late no problem these are recorded by the way uh, for those of you who don't know uh, these are recorded they're put on the daily FX YouTube channel and I also archive them underneath my uh, underneath my author name uh, so DAX really needs to get above 12,300 it gets up there and then I think that you know we're probably seeing some decent risk on uh, and, it, and I mean it could be a euro thing as well um, but you know for the DAX to really get rallying off of the euro the euro is gonna have to kind of come apart pretty strongly so tomorrow tomorrow is uh, you know it could be a really big day uh, for these things Keen. Uh, oh, you want to take a screenshot of the gold chart? Sure, I'll put it up there for a second. And I'll stop moving it, and there you go. <laughs> Give you a couple seconds. Um, moving on to the, uh, I forget the Nikkei. Uh, I, I don't like talking about the Nikkei. Uh, moving on to the CAC, since we were just talking about the DAX, still got this bearish channel. You know, to me, it, it's it's you know one of those things. Uh, it's one of those things where you know we're we're trending lower, uh, doing it in a very choppy fashion. Uh, I I still uh, of, of the mindset that we will eventually see a break uh, to the top side here. Uh, this low that we put in last week. This low that we put in was was huge uh, in terms of where it came at. It came at this 2000 uh, trend line uh, on a backside retest, 2007, 15 uh, retest. So I and and given that we're just kind of working our way lower here uh, after the French elections, uh, I would like to see a break above here. But again, until we do, you know, the the trend is down. Uh, but it's overall it's the way that it's grinding lower uh, and not really selling off hard obviously the euro has been the, the, the big problem there we went from focusing on the, the French elections to uh, focusing on how strong the euro was uh, so that this is you know obviously DAX CAC very very impacted by the uh, the direction of the euro uh, looking at the FTSE the FTSE is still kind of a mess uh, but as we were talking about yesterday, it it it's you can't be real. It's hard to be real bearish uh, until we get below 7,300. But I will say this: we do break 7,300. Uh, we are on the verge of of maybe today even breaking the 2016 uh, trend line from February. Uh, but really, and if if that breaks and we break 7,300, uh, we've got the 200-day coming up right underneath this. If we get down below 7,300, then then we could confirm that this it, this red line here, that this double top would be in play. Uh, but until then, it, it's support. So I you know I can't you can't get we're we're coming down on an area where we bounced hard from a few times. Uh, but certainly, if it if it closed down here 
under 7,300, I think that that we would be in for a, a decent down move. Uh, but right here, you know, still still keeping it propped up a bit. All righty, all righty. So we have later today. Again, we've got uh, we've got the Canadian. Uh, We've got the, the Bank of Canada coming up. Uh, implied volatility is suggesting that we're going to see a big move, so you know that's that's something to, to be aware of. Market might be pricing it wrong, but you know there there's certainly uh, implied volatility for, on the very short term has risen uh, significantly, and suggests that we're going to see a big move, and we are at that big long term 2012 trend line. Uh, then tomorrow we've got the ECB. Uh, and then, and we're certainly at a very big area here with this 2012 low, that big reversal, the DXY being at that big, uh, almost what was it, 19 year uh, level that's been going back for 19 years. Uh, so we, we we certainly are at a pivotal juncture here, and probably by Friday we're going to have a lot to talk about uh, when we when we reconvene with the charts. Uh, tomorrow is. Uh, for those of you regularly attend, you already know what I'm going to say. Tomorrow is becoming a better trader webinar. Uh, last week we did a uh, we did a lesson last week, if you want to call it that. And tomorrow we'll be doing a Q&A. So if you got some questions relating to your uh, trading performance, uh, trading psychology, execution, those things of that, that nature, uh, we will be discussing that in full force. I'm going to drop the link in here for those of you who haven't signed up and maybe want to come and join in on that. Uh, it's always a, it's always a fun webinar uh, to do. Uh, and today is the 6th and tomorrow is the 7th and here we go. So Q&A session tomorrow. Uh, get your questions out and uh, we'll have a good conversation about, uh, about trading. In general and that's at 9 30 GMT time all right everybody I will see you tomorrow and if I don't see you tomorrow hopefully then Friday talk to you later